Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new Flurn.com. Welcome to a special Halloween edition of Flurn. If you couldn't tell by all the fog and the cobwebs and the <laughs> jack o lantern Today we're going to be showing you guys a really scary thing you can do to just about any photo. We're going to show you how to take normal teeth and make them look sharp like monster teeth. And it's going to look totally real and that's the coolest part about this episode. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm super excited. So here's our image from today. It's the perfect image for making sharp teeth. She looks like she wants sharp teeth and uh, that's exactly what we want. So if you're doing a photo shoot, make sure you get something um, where it looks a little bit like scary and edgy. Otherwise you could just do this to a portrait of your mom and I'm sure she'll really love you for that. All right, let's go ahead and create a new layer. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually create a sketch of the teeth because we're gonna use the pen tool later in the episode to refine the actual shape of the teeth. But if I don't have a really good idea of what I actually want the shape to look like, it's not gonna look that great. So first we wanna do a sketch. So basically on a new layer, I'm just gonna grab my brush tool here and we're gonna sample this color. We're gonna just hold alt or option and sample the color of the white teeth. And I'm just gonna start sketching here, um, you know, teeth that I think might, might actually look good. And this is totally up to you. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this. And again, this is, it's just a sketch really. So it's not worth, making this anywhere near perfect. You just want to like generally get a good idea of what you want these teeth maybe to look like. Maybe this one's gonna, you know, curve in there, something like that. All right, and then this one we want to kind of match what's going on. Maybe we get even more of a curve on that one. I can zoom out in a second and kind of see what we've, what we got going on. All right, let's zoom out and see like, yeah, you know what? This tooth is, that's way too long, right? Like, I, I don't like it that big. So let's fill this in and then I'm gonna just grab the eraser tool and I'm just gonna erase some of this away. So it's, you know, gonna be about that long now. And that's kind of cool. This will make it kind of look like, almost like snake teeth, right? Like they kind of come down like that, like a little bit of fang, fang-like. All right. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then, you know what, this one, I think it needs to come out here like a little bit more and then maybe kind of come in like that. Or maybe it should just come straight down. So the point here is really just to create a good idea of what you actually want your teeth to look like. Yeah, that looks cool. I like a little, little jagged in there actually. That, that's kind of cool with it, like a little bit on the jagged edge. All right, so maybe I'll go ahead and you know duplicate that when it comes time to actually create the teeth. So this sketching stage is like, you might think it's like, okay, he's not doing anything really, um, but it's really important because it, it will really help to define exactly what you want your teeth to look like um, when you're done. All right, well, that looks kind of cool actually. It's, it's not perfect, but it's a great step for a sketch. So after we create the sketch of the tooth, it's time to actually get in there and refine the edge of the tooth and make it into a really good selection. And for that, I recommend using the pen tool. So we're gonna go ahead and click in here. And so basically we're gonna start tracing around our teeth with the pen tool. Cause you can see it, it just really doesn't look real right now. So I'm gonna hit P for the pen tool. And basically what I wanna do is start tracing right around my teeth. So we're gonna start right up here and we're gonna click and drag right down here, making sure I include the original tooth in my selection. There we go. Now I'm gonna click this point up in that direction. We're gonna come in that direction and pull down. You can see using the pen tool is really simple. And if you guys wanna learn more about using the pen tool, make sure to check out our episode on just that, on using the pen tool. You can get to it by clicking on your screen right now. All right, we'll go ahead and close up that selection and we're just gonna click right here and I'm gonna call this tooth one. There we go. So let's go ahead and turn this into a selection. I'm gonna hit control or command and click right here on the tooth. And now on a new layer, we're basically gonna do a lot of what we did earlier, but now we have a great selection to define it. So really important to get that sketch first because you don't wanna waste a ton of time with the pen tool if you don't really know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna to hold alt or option and sample colors here that are in my tooth. And I wanna start with the darker colors. This is gonna make it look like the tooth actually has some depth. All right. I'm gonna hit Control or Command H, and that's gonna hide my selection, allowing me to see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing. All right, and now I'm gonna sample this color and kind of paint in, making sure not to go all the way to the edge of the tooth. This should only be like towards the center of the tooth because that's what's gonna make it look like it's actually got some depth. We wanna make sure it's dark a little bit right around the edges and lighter towards the center. 
There we go. That looks good. Now we're going to put a little bit of a blur on it in just a little bit to make it like actually look like it's blending in with the rest of the mouth. But for now, I think that looks great. Now the next thing we're going to do to this tooth, let's go ahead and deselect. I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool. And basically I'm just going to copy this highlight here. So let's hold S, S for the clone stamp tool, Alt or Option to sample this point. And then on a new layer, I'm just going to paint that highlight right over here. Now we're going to change our layer blend mode from normal down to lighten. And that's going to make sure that the highlight only does that. It only highlights. You don't want it to be any darker. And now let's go ahead and hit Command T. And I'm going to just kind of bring this a lot larger because we want this highlight to kind of look like it's following down the tooth. And we're going to right click and go to warp. And next I'm going to kind of push this around. There we go. To make it look like it's actually following the shape of the tooth. So we want it like that giant curvature of the tooth. We want to make sure it actually includes that curvature there. All right, let's hit warp again, just to make sure that it actually does exactly what we want. All right, there we go. That's looking pretty great. All right, and hit enter. Let's go ahead and make sure that that gets exactly where we want it. Very cool. So zooming out now, we can see we've got our highlight on this tooth and we've got the different colors that actually come together. Now let's go to this tooth and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a blur so it actually blends in with the rest of, with the, rest of the mouth because it's not 100% perfect resolution here. So let's go to filter, down here to blur and to Gaussian blur. We're just gonna choose something really small, something like point, there we go, point 0.4 looks pretty good. So there you can see the before and the after. It's just gonna help it blend in and make it look a little bit more real. All right, now it's time to group those two layers together and we'll just double click and call this tooth one. So after we completed our first tooth, basically we're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a second tooth together and then we're going to speed things up so you guys don't have to watch me do the exact same thing all over again. Okay, so for our second tooth, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and zoom in and uh, this time I'm going to take care of this other main tooth. So let's go ahead and hit P for the pen tool. Okay, let's go over to our paths and we're going to create a new path for this tooth. So we'll just call this tooth two. Okay, and basically, again, same thing. We're going to start off the edge of this tooth. We're going to kind of come in all the way down to here. We're going to click and drag. You know what? I'll create two points there. There's one and two. Generally, you want to create as little points as possible when you're using the pen tool. It's going to help things be a lot more uh, smooth. All your lines and your curves are going to be a lot more smooth. All right, and then I'm going to bring this up just like this other tooth wasn't there. So I'm going to bring it, you know, in the way that like I'm kind of ignoring the tooth that's out in front. All right. And then we're going to bring it up in this way and then right down here to kind of finish off our selection. All right. And there we go. So let's hold control or command, click on this thumbnail here, and then we're going to create a new layer underneath. And let's group that with itself. We'll just call this tooth two. There we go. And now on this layer, we're going to go ahead and make our sketch invisible. We're going to grab our brush tool and I'm going to start painting our colors there. There we go. And because we've created this group underneath the first group, basically I don't have to worry about, you know, painting over top of the other tooth because the other tooth is physically over top of this one. All right. So let's paint this on down. And this is why, you know, having that sketch is such an important part of your original um, of your original plan. Let's just make sure that it, that blends exactly how we want with our tooth. You know what? In this case, I don't think like this curve isn't exactly right. So I'm just going to go back to my paths. This is the great thing about paths. You can click back to your tooth, use your pen tool, and then you can actually change your pen path. There we go. After you've made it. So I don't have to go and try to change everything. I'm just changing my pen path by holding the control or the command key and I'm able to click on any of these things and then I can make a path that's actually a little bit more like it's closer to what I want. So now that I've made that change, let's hit control or command. I'll click there, go back to my layers and now we'll just paint with our brush tool right down there, kind of fill that in. And if I've overextended my path a little bit, just hit shift command I to bring you up to inverse your selection and then just erase away what you don't want with your eraser tool. So that's why using the paths are so nice because you can go in here and adjust these things after the fact. All right, after we've got our dark like base in, what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and darken up 
the underside of the tooth just a little bit. There we go, make it look more realistic. And then we're gonna bring in some of the lighter colors here. All right, looking pretty good. Okay, now this highlight here, I actually wanted to extend on down. So we can either just create a new layer and just use our brush tool or clone stamp. So let's try our clone stamp tool. I'm just gonna sample this point and right over here, we're gonna basically just paint another highlight. Again, we're gonna change this from normal down to lighten. And now I'm gonna bring this down, let's hit Command T, and we're gonna just warp this in just a little bit. Control or Command on these guys to kind of bring those in. And basically what I want is my original highlight to just extend right down this tooth a little bit more. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and put a layer mask on that and paint away black where it should not be visible. All right, there we go. So now that highlight is just extending down the tooth of our um, vampire tooth. And <laughs> we're gonna make a new layer and just kind of blend that in just a little bit better. So you can copy the highlights with the clone stamp tool or you can just paint them in there. Um, but whatever you do, just make sure you have the variation between the light and the dark colors that's gonna make these teeth look a lot more realistic. So we've got two of the teeth done and now we're gonna kind of fast forward through the rest of the teeth. All right, so we've created all the top teeth and they look perfect, but in fact, they look a little bit too perfect. Um, if we look at the teeth originally before we created any of these teeth on top, we'll see that teeth have like little imperfections, like little, you know, nicks and dimples and things like that that just come with normal wear and tear. And if you're doing something like faking teeth in Photoshop, like what we're doing, they're gonna be a little bit too perfect. So what we're gonna do is actually on a new layer above all these teeth, I'm gonna go in and kind of build some of these imperfections. And really simple to do. Basically just with my lasso tool, I'm just gonna kind of include some of these little areas like this. There we go, let's just hit shift and there we go. Holding down the shift key just allows me to kind of like add little areas to my selection. There we go. And we'll take a little chunk, well, maybe not that much. All right, so basically these selections are just gonna help me choose little parts of these teeth. There we go. And now, with those selections already active, I'm just gonna use my brush tool and we're gonna paint black right over those areas. So let's just paint black right in here over that guy. If you need to hit Control or Command H, you can do that and that will hide your selection. So this is basically just taking like little chips and dings out of the teeth and things like that. And it's just gonna help make it look a lot more realistic. All right, there we go. Now that's a little bit too well-defined, so we're just gonna use our blur tool. So Gaussian blur and hit okay. And you can see it just kind of like makes our teeth look a little bit more like they're actually been used over time <laughs> instead of uh, just brand new and fresh. Cool, and that's pretty much it. It's really just doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's why we sped things up. But if you don't wanna take that much time to go each individual tooth, we're gonna show you a lot quicker way. And I'm actually gonna do that with the bottom teeth. So to get to the bottom teeth, I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna hit Shift Option Command N for a new layer, and then Shift Option Command E for a stamp visible layer. Now, this way, in my opinion, is no, it's not nearly as good as the original version because the original gives us a ton of control. But we are gonna use the liquify tool for the bottom teeth. So to get to our liquify tool, let's just go ahead and make a selection around the area we actually want to edit, which is gonna be the bottom teeth here. We're gonna go to filter. We're gonna go down here to liquify. Okay, and let's zoom in. So again, this is the way that you can totally do this if you're in a hurry and you don't wanna spend a ton of time. Basically, we're just gonna use our forward warp tool here. I'm gonna bring our density down and we're gonna leave our pressure about where it is. And now I'm just gonna start pulling these teeth up from the center here. And I can kind of shape each of the individual teeth based on the position where they're showing up in the mouth. And I can bring the valleys down and the peaks up a little bit. 
All right. And I'm trying my best to not make the, like manipulate the mouth inside of the tooth too much. And again, in my opinion, this is not going to be the best way to sharpen teeth in Photoshop, but for like bottom teeth where you really don't need to spend, you know, a ton of time or whatever, um, this is not, not a bad way. It's definitely a lot, um, it's a lot quicker. I'll give it that. All right. And let's go ahead and make our brush a little bit smaller. If you want to create that really nice point here at the top, just bring your brush quite a bit smaller and then that'll help you actually create your points. So a larger brush to get most of the shape of the tooth in. And then when you want to create your like tippity points, there we go. We use a smaller brush. We'll even do these, these molars a little bit. We'll give those like four points. That'll be kind of cool. All right, now let's make our brush nice and small. We can just really sharpen up those ends there. All right, and I think this is gonna look great in conjunction with the top teeth. So my recommendation would be maybe do both techniques or whatever works for you. All right, let's make that brush just a little bit larger. We're gonna pull that down. There we go, and let's hit okay. And there we can see our bottom teeth are sharpened. And you know what? I like that so much. I'm gonna do something similar with our top teeth here to just kind of help shape them a little bit more. So let's make that, those into a selection now. Let's go to filter and then down here to liquify. There we go. And I'm gonna kind of push and pull these a little bit as well. Just, we've got most of the shape is in there and now I can just go in here and like do some subtle adjustments and refinements if I want to. But our edges are all perfect because we created them using the liquify tool. Or sorry, using the pen path. We're using the liquify tool right now. All right, let's make that tooth a little longer. I kind of like this actually. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that I would wind up using the liquify tool here, but it's kind of nice for like um, doing some final adjustments. All right, let's make that bigger, kind of bring this down a little bit more. All right, and the nice thing about the liquify tool is once we're done, which we'll do that in just a second here, you can always apply that transformation and if you don't like it, you can just undo it and then try it again. All right, let's bring that down, bring the point to that. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Let's hit okay and see the change we made on that. This just look a little bit more gnarly. Let's see if I like the before or the after version. I like the after. They're a little bit more gnarly, a little bit more scary. All right, very, very cool. All right, and that's it for making sharp teeth in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and take a look at our before, and here's our after. Cool, guys, thanks so much for watching Fleur and I. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was super fun for me to make, and uh, you guys can go out and make anything you want sharp now. <laughs> <laughs> using the pen tool, make some great selections, and then fill that in using the brush tool. And then to finish it off, the liquify tool worked really well. If you like what we're doing here at Florin, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can receive free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or comment about today's episode, please leave it in a comment right down below. We'll be happy to get back to you. We have a great awesome staff here who answers all your questions and be sure to share Flurn with your friends. We'd love it. It helps us grow and continue to bring you great tutorials in the future. Thanks again guys. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.